Hello, hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Volvo Christian, and welcome to my last video starring this C40. So this is the C40 Recharge Twin Ultimate, finished off in the classy and stylish Vapor Grey. It's a press car that I've been borrowing from uh, Volvo Car Norway for about a week. Actually, exactly a week. Picked it up last Monday. Today is also Monday. I've driven it about slightly over 2,000 kilometers. And in this video, I want to make my good, bad and ugly after 2,000 kilometers in the C40, model 24. So I hope you will enjoy this short video. We're actually going to start with the good things. I have compiled down a list and the list on the good things I had to narrow it down so I got like three or four good things and then I got two or three bad things and one ugly thing at the end. But we're gonna start with the good and as I said this list could be much longer because there's so much I appreciate and love with Volvo's C40 and also the XC40. I own an XC40 myself and many of the elements I'm gonna talk about today are directly transferable to the XC40. But we're gonna start with my my good things. I got four things uh, and we're gonna start with my number four and then work our way up to my number one. And my fourth on the list on my good list are directly related to the Model 25 updates. I've already made two videos about the Model 25. First I made everything to know and then a couple of days ago I made the update regarding the Model 25 updates. But in both of these two videos I talked about two specific things that are so important for me and so uh, things that I really appreciate that I have straight into my top four list on the C40, XC40 experience. But in particular the C40. The first thing was the digital inner or a digital rear view mirror. And that is absolutely something I would add if I was shopping a C40. Because now the visibility out from the inner mirror that is quite limited. You are seeing just a couple of meters behind you. With the, this update that is available also for the Model 21, 22, 23 and 24 and also a bunch of other Volvo models such as the XC60, V90 Cross Country, V60. So just talk with your local Volvo dealership if this is suitable to your car. What I've saw, seen is like Model 22 and up. But either way, you will get a camera pod on the inside of the window here. They will glue it uh, stuck to the window. Some wiring under the roof line over to the inner mirror and then with just one sw switch of the mirror you can see the full visibility out from my camera mirror. So you won't sacrifice too much on this sloping roof line. You will get the same visibility as you will get in the XC40 that doesn't have this sloping roof line. So that is very very appreciated. The second thing we got in the Model 25 update are the Polestar performance optimization, like the performance drive mode. Because that is something I have been complaining about in my own XC40, that I can't force the all-wheel drive to engage. It is the car itself that decides whether you have some wheel spin or you have hard acceleration, then the front motor will engage. But if you go for the performance upgrade, Polestar engineered performance upgrade on the C40, XC40, this is only available from the Model 25 and 20, excuse me, 24 and 25 because that has, that has the new powertrain. But then you can force the all-wheel drive on. You can just engage it permanently and have it constant all-wheel drive. That is something I would appreciate. So that's why that is, those two are number four on the list, the Model 25 update. If we jump over to uh, number three on the good things, that is actually we got to luggage capacity. It's actually quite spacious. A couple of days ago, I uploaded a video with um, a luggage capacity test. If you haven't seen that one, that is also on my uh, channel. You can also compare it against the XC40 if you, if you want to do that. But there's so much room available here. You also have underfloor storage. And yesterday, I was uh, on my way back from Sweden and we did some shopping at the border. Filled it up with, uh, they wanted a lot of Pepsi Max and stuff. A lot of candy under the floor, a lot of space. So the C40, it's not much that you sacrifice with this sloping roof line compared to the XC40. It still has a lot of space available. So that is my number 
three on the list. And then we have to jump inside for number two. So let's jump inside for number two. And that is actually regards to the interior, both design and the way you interact with the infotainment. And this is very subjective and very personal, uh, but after I've spent almost two weeks in Volvo's EX30, then I was really, uh, I got really glad when I came back in my own XC40 and also when, when I'm driving the C40 here. Because it's just something that you, in, how you interact with the car and all the functions are just so much easier here with physical buttons. So much easier and you don't need to look down, you can feel this center part and you instantly know where to push. Like the adaptive cruise control, if you want to adjust the speed to the car in front of you, you don't have to look away, don't have to think about the screen, just push here or push there. Increase the uh, distance or decrease the distance. It's so convenient to have this on the on your button. And then if we start the car, window wiper, individual stock, also with this rain sensitivity. Indicator. And just I like that it actually physically moves instead of the EX30 that always defaults to the center. But this thing. And also this volume, I can't twist it up now, but this volume knob, just so easy to operate and interact with the car. If you want to do the hazard or you want to do the defrost, you just know where things are. Right? If you want to change your song, you don't have to look at it. Volume knob to the right. You don't have to interact with the screen in that extent as you do with the EX30. And this is something I really appreciate. appreciate. I like this more mechanical approach, this physical buttons. I know this is something that probably belongs to the past eventually, but uh, I like this very, very much. So interior, the interaction, the design layout, physical buttons in the doors to operate the windows. For me, this is definitely <laughs> high on my list. That's why it's number two. But now we have to jump outside again for number one. And now I save the best for last. This is definitely the best thing for me with Volvo's C40. And maybe you have already guessed it and you can probably see where we're going since I moved the car. So you can see it in silhouette and that is the exterior design. This is definitely the best thing for me with Volvo's C40. How this roof line just tapers down. And you know the first thing on the cake or the cherry on top are these wicked LED taillights with sequential functionality both on the startup and when you lock the car and also the indicator lights. It just looks so darn good from this angle. Three quarter straight from the rear and this hip area. Oh, I just love the exterior design. I grabbed a couple of pictures up here in the um, spin up to the top level on the parking garage. I can overlay um, or put them in here at, at the end. But exterior design, definitely the best thing. A new place, a new home for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by. Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so new, somewhere I can find myself Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive And then we come to the bad things And honestly, I have actually struggled to find both two and three points to put on my list, but that's just me and that's just the mood I'm in right now. Because the last one to two weeks, I've been actually a little uh, C40 fanboy going on. I just, uh, I don't know, it's just something that I find very, very appealing. And I'm actually considering to ordering a C40 or buying a used C40 myself. 
that is also probably why it was, it was kind of harder. But I have found actually two or three things that I want to share with you that I think are the bad things with the C40 and also the XC40. I'm going to start with my point number three. And I'm not quite sure if it's number three or number two, but I think I will put it at my number three. And that is actually in regards to the infotainment, the center screen, the menu layers and the setup. I find this to be, yeah, I would actually say slightly dated. It's, it's not so intuitive and easy to navigate in. It's kind of clumsy and things are buried in menus. And also the, the layout, you have a pretty small screen and they have just poured in a lot of things. So the, the, the lines down under are just very small and it's not so easy to operate or use or interact with when you're out driving. It also is a contrast to the EX30 that is, has a bigger screen, much more real estate available. And the icons are bigger, more shortcuts, easier to navigate in. It's more intuitive in use. But yeah, this is an older system, but I, I wish Volvo with the Model 25 that they didn't just rename it. They also gave, would give it a facelift on the inside because it needs a little facelift. But we don't, we, we just got the Model 25 and I don't think we, I don't think we will see a facelift before yeah, Model 26 or most likely Model 27. That will be the facelift year. And that is still a long time away. So we probably just have to accept this infotainment, but when you compare it against the EX30, yeah, this feels just slightly dated. And this is just the center screen I'm talking about. The menu, the visual layers, how it looks, the visual impression and how you navigate in the screen. So that is something I don't like. The second thing that I find bad, actually Volvo's chase for the 50 shades. They are just oh, so boring if life was all black and white. Here we have the vapor gray. And previously Volvo had Fjord, no, not Fjord blue, excuse me. Uh, they had Fusion Red on the C40. They also had it on other models, but it was still available on the C40. But on Model 25, they're just gone. No more Fusion Red. The only real color we have are Fjord Blue. But the other shades, they're just 50 shades of gray. Oh, I find that so, so boring. And this is just personal preferences, I know. But this video, um, this, this is my, my thoughts. And I find that the color scheme of Volvo are just so goddamn boring. I like colors. I, life is better in colors, I'm sorry. So if I was to order one, yes, I could go with the Fjord Blue. But I'm some, sometimes I'm slightly tired of my Fjord Blue. I want something more bold. I want the Bursting Blue, I want the Fusion Red, I want the Passion Red. I want, I want the, even denim blue was more exciting than these colors we have now. We have the sand dune, we have the vapor gray, we have the crystal white, the onyx black. And we had the bright dusk, but what do we have? Um, we have something else. The sage green, I think sage green is still with us. But yeah, I'm not sure what Volvo are doing with the color, color setup. It just, they were slightly fun with the EX30, put it in the moss yellow. But the, C, the C40 should all, also be a fun car. So we need something more bold, more extreme. But yeah, that was my point number two. And that takes us to the thing that I find are the worst with the XC40 and the C40 variants. And that is efficiency and range. Obviously when you have such a huge fascia as this one, you can't compete against that uh, car across the ocean in the USA with this soapy and just yeah, dull exterior. Um, this is the little Swedish brick. But uh, efficiency and range, that is not a strong suit with Volvo's XC40 and C40. And I know from ownership experience. My XC40 during the winter season in the most, the, like December and January, when we had temperatures down to like negative 25 degrees Celsius, my range was like 200 kilometers. But I use the preheating every single trip. So when I'm driving to work, from work, 
to activities, from activities or something, or if I'm going shopping at a mall, I use the preheating every single time. And that burns through the range. And also when you have negative 20 outside and you want like plus 22 on the inside, nice and toasty cabin, yeah, you're burning through the range. So range and efficiency, also when you're driving on snow and ice, that is not a strong suit with Volvo's XC40 and C40. Huge front, yeah, it's also a combined platform, it's not a, a fully EV platform. But then again, Volvo's EX30, also not so efficient. Volvo doesn't, uh, or Geely, um, because some things are developed by Geely on the 30. These are not efficient cars, but there's a tough competitor that really sets a benchmark with this soapy front. We can't see those numbers, but <laughs> but okay, we are now we are pushing spring almost uh, towards summer. Today is a beautiful spring day. We got 14 degrees, so range are significantly better now. During the summer, we can easily see 400, 450. I've even seen 480 in my own XE40. Yes, the double VLTP are significantly higher, but the double double VLTP are just yeah, like this. We think it's, <laughs> no, but, it, but it, the tests are done in a much more controlled environment. Lower speed, no wind, no climate. So you're not going to get close to the double VLTP. But winter, yeah, efficiency in range, that is the, the worst thing with the XC40 and C40. So that was my top three bad things. Infotainment, slightly dated. The boring vapor gray. Ugh. And then lastly, efficiency and range. So that was my bad things. Now we have to end with the most ugly thing with the EX40 or XC40 and C. Yeah. You know what, uh, what I mean. And that takes us to the end with the ugly part. And this is actually quite ugly. There's no other way on telling you this, this is the ugliest thing with the XC40 and the C40. And that is actually the sticker price on this car. But then again, car prices these days, don't know what the heck is happening, but this is going higher and higher. Like the EX30, if you go to full enchilada, that's over 500,000 Norwegian kroners. Over 500 for such a small car, but this is just blows that out of, out of the water. The sticker price, because if I want a C40, if I want a Model 25, I want the recharge twin performance. So all-wheel drive, 442 horsepower. Then I want it in the ultimate spec. And I know you don't have to go for the ultra, ultra or the uh, ultimate spec, but I want the Harman Kardon stereo. I want the panoramic roof. I want the 360 camera. I want the park sensor. I want it. So. We have to go for the Ultra, and then we have to add a, a metallic clock. I'm not sure what color I should go for, because uh, Volvo is still working the, the 50 shades of grey. So we basically just have one color, we have the Fjord blue metallic. So that is an additional like 6,000. Then I want the tinted windows, then I want the digital inner mirror. That is a must have. Probably also add running boards, 20 inch alloys. I want the full spec, but if you go crazy like that, the sticker price for the C40 actually ticks in at over 700,000 kroners. That's just insane. It's, my XC40 was also quite expensive when I ordered it, the Mollet 24. I also had a recharge twin, the Fjord Blue with the um, tailored wool upholstery. But now, uh, it just absolutely bonkers that you have to pay almost 700,000 for a XC40 or C40. I remember just a couple of years ago when I purchased my S90, the S90 T8 R design with the full enchilada. I had a Bowers of Wilkins, I had the air suspension, I had a ventilated seat with massage. And there was a 90 series car. That was just over 900,000. And this is 700. How can you... How can you no, I, I, sorry, I can't, I can't say that go out and buy this one because it's almost 700 if you want the full kit. I don't know. Oh, it pains me to see it, but uh, to, to say it, but it's not worth 700. 
I love the C40 and I want the C40, but not at 700,000. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. The car prices these days. So, but there's obviously a solution for that. Buy second hand. Buy a Model 24. I have a Model 24 XC40 and I'm going to sell that probably uh, very soon and I will be looking for a used C40. Primarily uh, Model 24 to get that upgrade and also uh, that new motor setup. But the new price, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm out of that boat. Uh, I don't want to spend 700 on a C40 or EC40 as it's called. So that was my good, my bad and my ugly. What do you think about my list, my uh, conclusion after 2000 kilometers? Are you uh, agree, disagree? Drop a comment down below and as always I appreciate every like, every comment and for new viewers if you will consider subscribing to my channel. But now it's time to head out, uh, I will see you in the next one. So take care and bye bye.